Good morning. Happy Thursday morning. It is July the 18th. Um, and uh, coming to you today, Mandy Brenham, full time investor. Super excited to uh, be able to share the screen with, uh, with a great friend of mine. There is so much going on in the real estate investing world right now. And if you're not on the train, I don't want to talk about like bandwagon because that's I'm not a bandwagon girl. But if you're not on the real estate investing train, I'm encouraging you to get real estate as part of a diversified investment portfolio. Have your stocks. Be kind of nervous of them. Have your cash sit in your bank. You might as well have it under your under your mattress. Make sure you have some real estate as part of a diversified investment portfolio. Uh, and Elizabeth Kelly, uh, thanks for being here today. Elizabeth is is uh, is certainly familiar with the landscape of real estate and has had investments uh, for many years now. She wears various hats. Today, we're going to talk about, as a full time investor, how many hats you seriously can or should, and um, like how to keep your boat afloat with uh, with the various ways. Um, that you can have some real estate investing and some income from investing full time. So uh, Elizabeth is a coach. She is a very she's a property owner from small little duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, fiveplexes. I bet you we could probably go six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I know we were just talking about a twenty-four unit that you have. So she certainly owns a variety in her portfolio. And uh, coach, you own a property management company. You're a mortgage specialist. Like the list goes on. Your your credentials are are amazing. So thanks for being here today. Thank you so much. It's such an honor, and it's great to be able to catch up with you a little bit because we're so busy. We never get to connect. So it's nice to nice to be able to chat for a little bit. That is the life of a full time investor. You know, Andrew last week, which I know we both know well, but he said, uh, I said, what do you do on a daily basis? And he said gets out to talk to people because you feel very isolated sometimes in your own little world that yeah. you're just head down working really hard. And I know you might have that. I want to start out. I want you to share your journey. I want you to just like, I, I, we don't even have enough time on our show to be able to go over all of your, uh, your history and your background. But I really want people to have an idea of where you come from, what you've done, why you're here, where you are right now today. Oh, thank you. Um, so my background, I, I was raised, you know, traditional family. My dad was an accountant. You know, my mom had a couple of part time jobs and it was very much like get a good education, you know, find a good job, stay there for 35 years. Then, you know, hope that your pension's big enough and retire and that's it. You're done. And it was very cookie cutter. That was my parents' goal. That was what they anticipated for me. So, you know, I went to university, got a degree in kinesiology. Uh, my husband Emmett says I have a degree in gym. And like many people with degrees in kinesiology use exactly zero of it now. Um, I worked in non-for-profit for, not-for-profit for, not for, profit for uh, I guess about 10 years I uh, did I was an event coordinator and a fundraiser and then I switched over and I worked in insurance for a couple of years and I had my home auto and life insurance uh, license okay. and then from there I somewhere in the middle there when I was still a not-for-profit I met my husband Emmett and um, he very much wanted to do real estate so he already had one or two properties with his best friend and uh, we we started looking and buying properties with the two of us and then we <laughs> and then he attended the two hour um, rich dad poor dad or elite legacy seminar and that was it um, next thing I knew we were sitting in a classroom for three days and then you know there is the the big um, okay you have to make a choice now you know do do you go in one direction where you say no to the education or do you go in another direction and you say yes and it's a big investment so my husband's a, a professional engineer and we both looked at it we looked at how much we spent in our university educations we looked at where we were and where we wanted to be and to us it just made sense to really invest in our education so we spent a year taking classes we did a, a couple of mentorships we um really focused on our, our network and the very first deal that we did after we took our, our classes and after we educated ourselves, we saved the amount of money we saved more than paid for our classes. 
So for, for us, it was, we were doing the right thing. We were investing in real estate. We were doing it the wrong way. Um, you know, we're buying single family homes. We were buying condos. And then, you know, the, our condo, we had six units in one building and we got hit with a special assessment. So all of a sudden our positive cash flow on six of our units evaporated overnight and we had zero control over that. So we spent, we learned a lot of really hard lessons. Um, but the education piece for us was absolutely key. And in return, there were a lot of people who helped us along the way. And I think that's what's kind of pushed me. You know, I could just be a full time real estate investor and do only that. But I don't get the sense of reward from it that you do when you give back to the community that's given you freedom. Um, you know, within six months of our courses, I had left my job. Um, my husband left his a few hours, a few few hours later. No, not that fast. A few years later. And um, we were both now full time in the business, uh, our property management company, we have 12 employees. Um, we have a fantastic team around us. And, you know, as much as as real estate investors, we try and struggle to control everything. The reality is, if you don't surround yourself with amazing people, then your scalability is very limited. So um, and I just find one of the best parts of what I do is that I have the opportunity to go in different directions. So if I have, you know, a coaching client who needs some more time, I can give them that time. If um, we have, if we're having, um, you know, we're acquiring a building or a property and it's struggling, then I can certainly go in that direction and put some extra time in there. If we have a, an investor who's bought a building and they need a little more handholding, then I can put my resources over there. Uh, it really very much is, um, it, it gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility. When I yeah. say, what is the day in the life of Elizabeth Kelly? I bet you your every day is probably very different. How do you actually, you know, what is a schedule kind of look like for you? Do you, you have allocated time for certain things, but like, how do you kind of manage the not necessarily knowing what tomorrow is going to bring depending on what, what comes at you um, on that given day? Yeah, it, it can be really challenging. I think a lot of people aren't prepared for the amount of literally firefighting that you do. You are literally, okay, there's a problem I need to go here. There's a situation I need to go here. Um, you know, especially when you're doing property management, you don't know when a pipe's going to burst, when there's going to be a fire, when there's going to be, you know, a hot water tank that shuts down and you've got a, a building full of people with no hot water. So um, you do your best to structure what you can. I fanatically live by my calendar. Um, every single appointment I make, every single thing I do, whether it's personal or professional, that goes in my calendar and I follow it religiously. Um, all my staff have access to my calendar so they know if they need me for anything, they can check my calendar, they can schedule and do what they need to do. Um, but it's very much, you, you structure what you can and then you just open yourself up and realize that, you know what, I will be where I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing at any given point in time. There's there's definitely an element of surrender there. Yeah. Um, you can't become too attached to things because, you know, stuff changes. So then with all the various hats that you're wearing, you did some insurance before you were, you did some kinesiology, you did some insurance, you're here you are now you're into the property management or the, the property um, acquisition stage. When did you realize that it was just a natural process for you to open? And did you open brand new or did you take over somebody's property management company? And um, what are the ups and downs of something like that? <laughs> Um, <laughs> so what happened for us was we discovered a market, we discovered Kirkland Lake and, um, we came up here and started looking around, looking at properties and we kind of fell in love with it. And, um, we had, we originally, our vision was very much, you know, we're going to have properties and, you know, we'll come up once a month, but we'll have a property manager in place and we will just leave them to, to do the management. And what we very quickly discovered discovered was that um, our idea of how we wanted our tenants managed, how we wanted them screened, who we wanted to have in our buildings and how we wanted things done was very different than what some other, you know, the way other people approached it. And, you know, 
you always you need variety in in life because it's what keeps things interesting but we kind of got to the point where we went you know what we really want to do this ourselves so rather than hiring a property management company we actually just started we opened our own ma management company and we started hiring our own staff um, so that's given us a tremendous amount of freedom and flexibility <clears throat> excuse me in terms of being able to structure things the way that we want to being able to allocate our resources our time our money our staffing, um, being able to um, do that. There, there's definitely challenges. I mean, anybody in real estate who tells you that this is easy, um, that they've never made a mistake, that they've never lost money, that's just, that. that's not reality. The reality is most people buy investment property expecting to, you know, have to be saving for their retirement. And what you actually do is you become a business owner and there's tremendous responsibility with that. I mean, you can shift some of that responsibility to your property manager, but you still need to know, you know, what is the residential tenancy act in your province saying, um, you know, what rules govern you from a CRA perspective? Like there's so much that you should know. It's not just, I'm going to buy an investment property and, and get positive cash flow. There's so much more to it than that. So that was definitely our, our first few years were definitely a learning curve, learning how to hire the right staff, how to screen, how to train, how to manage and support people so that they can grow into their full capabilities in their roles. Um, that, yeah. That's I think what a lot of people don't anticipate is now you're a business owner. Now you you run a business, you you know, you have HST remittances, you've got accounting at the yin yang, like we can generate paper better than an insurance company, I'm telling you. Payroll and uh, like WSIB and, you know, yeah. and you're going to the landlord tenant board, you know, the tenancy act, you're a paralegal, you're you're in everything. Absolutely. Yeah. And you've taken that and you know what it what um, pitfalls people people can go through. I, you know what, even just quickly. You have talked about lawsuits. You've talked about physical uh, abuse potentially from tenants. You've talked about um, fires in units, major vacancies, boiler breakdowns in, in major buildings. How do you honestly come out on the other side? Like those are things that honestly, that would be like emergency break, I'm out of here. Like, thanks so much. I'll go back to my nine to five. So you've got catastrophes that are going on and you are like, yeah, this is me. This is a day in the life of what are some of the ways that you're able to get over those? Um, it's funny that you say that. So I, I, I don't like to ever pretend that I'm not human because there are days where I get up and I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I, I just, I want to go back to bed. I want to pull the covers over my head. Like I've had enough of this, yep. but I don't know how to, I don't talk about this a lot, but I wouldn't be who I am if I hadn't had the experiences that I've had. Um, when I grew up, I was very much, you know, I was kind of, um, I don't know, naive, uh, sheltered. I just, I guess it, maybe I was lacking confidence. And what I've been able to do um, over the last few years in terms of running the business, building the team, um, it's its tremendous. I, I sit and I look back and I'm like, I, I can't believe I did this. I don't remember parts of it. You know, there are times where, <laughs> you know, you, you have uh, a major building that's had a fire and you have to, you know, help, you know, numerous tenants find new housing for and accommodations for the night and make sure everybody's comfortable and looked after. But um, you really just, this field I think is an opportunity where you can become everything that you are supposed to be. And, and wow. that's I think, one of the most rewarding things. And I think that's part of why, and I think you too, we want to give back, you know, we're, we're not coaching because we have free time available and because, you know, it's, it's that or sit on the, the beach and, and drink daiquiris. We're coaching because we know that we wouldn't have gotten to where we are without our network, without our support. Um, my business partner, Michelle, she's talked me off a ledge a few times, you know, I call her and I'm literally losing my mind. I'm like, I can't believe blah, blah, blah. And you know, she's, she's my, my default go-to my like, take a breath, calm down, you know, you can get through this. You've gotten through so much worse. And, you know, the network, the people that you build around you really yep. 
really helps you. You know, when when I was really struggling, you and and our good friend Debbie, you guys literally dropped what you were doing and gave me some of your time. And I will never ever forget that because I just having you guys up here in Kirkland Lake with me for a few days absolutely recharged me, rejuvenated me, and and got me back on track. And and I'm forever grateful to you guys for that. Well, uh, it was awesome. I'm really glad that we came. I remember just coming up there and like jaw dropped. Like if I thought I had a lot on my plate and then you see somebody else who in my world, the plate is heaping and you're just like, Hey, would you like to go? And I was like, Oh my gosh, like this girl's normal. And she's, she's <laughs> dealing with all of this stuff. Right. Um, Not I really goes <laughs> to you for being able to handle it. But mm -hmm. I do believe that that's where it's come from. Why I talk to people and go so, say something about Elizabeth Kelly. And they're like, Oh yeah, she was a coach of ours. Oh yeah. We've, uh, we've attended seminars of hers and you have taken all of this. And some people can just hold it inside and think I'm the only one dealing with these problems. And instead you, You've turned it around and you're like coaching moment here this is what's going to be able to walk you walk a coaching client or a mentor or a mentee so i say you are the mentor um so how did it transition from you're the student you're learning you're going through all these processes and when did you realize that you were ready to to turn it over and be the be the coach in the in the process i it's hard to say because I was a trainer for a long time um, before I, I ever, and what it just sort of, I guess it just kind of turned into, you know, attending networking events and spending time with people and then them asking, you know, do you have time you can give me outside of that? Um, really what it comes down to is, is wanting to help people. And, you know, I, I am very grateful for the opportunity that um, Elite Legacy gives me to be a trainer and to be able to work with new investors, people who are starting out, because it's so much less expensive to learn from other people's mistakes than it is to make your own. So the um, the opportunity to you know be a trainer and and to share with people these are some of the challenges and and I'm not one of those people who kind of sugarcoats it like you want to see <laughs> you want to see you know one of my one of my rent to owns that the tenants abandoned and left with the worst flea infestation the exterminator had ever seen in his 35 years in business like I'll yeah. show you pictures of that the difference for me with real estate versus any other form of investment is the opportunity to put in some sweat equity and tangibly affect the the value of your property you know you can't look at stocks and say okay well if i put in you know some evenings some weekends if i hire some contractors you know i can increase the value of my stocks you, nope. you can't do that. You nope. don't have the opportunity to sit down with your the person managing your funds and say, do I know you? Do I trust you? Um, I'm giving you my retirement savings. And, and what are you going to do with that? How are you going to make decisions? Do you see who I am as a person and what I'm trying to accomplish? Um, it's that way for us in real estate very much. You know, you do the same thing when someone comes to you and says, I want a JV with you. You take that as a very personal responsibility. I'm sure there are times, especially when you are starting out, where you are thinking in your head, you know, lying awake at night going, somebody is trusting me with their retirement savings. I need to do right by this person. And that's what I love about real estate is the opportunity to choose the people you work with, to choose where you invest your money. And the difference between making good decisions and bad decisions, nine times out of 10 is nothing but education. Yes. That's all it is, is educating yourself. And when we started doing real estate 15 years ago, there were not, the supports were not there. Like this type of a show did not exist. There was one show on Rogers back in the day um, you know, all the podcasts and, and all the resources that are available to us on a free basis. I mean, when I started doing real estate, we were still faxing offers back and forth. <laughs> like, that's how old I am, Mandy. We were faxing offers back in the good old days. That's not old. That's not old. <laughs> you, I just remember the first offer, we, which was our primary house that we bought. Uh, Larry, like, negotiated to the thousand dollars. And I think the guy offered us like 99,000 and Larry went 97 and the guy went like 90, 99 or 98, five. And like, it was ridiculous back and forth and what the offer looked like. 
Mm -hmm. Now I'm just like, well, I really want to give them a clean offer. And you did you sign or you docu sign and you don't even whatever you always yeah. laugh on those docu signs. I don't know if you guys have those, but it always says, um, tell like, um, allow them to know where you're signing. Like mm -hmm. there's that like location, let the location be known where you're signing. Yeah. And I'm just like in the car driving in some random spot. One time I signed and I'm in a canoe and like probably nowhere. I'm, I'm sure the, the people get this and be like, was she, is she ever in an office? Is she ever like, and you're like, no, that's not what my day looks like. That's not where I buy houses. I'm always wherever it is all over the place, different countries, you're signing offers, signing amendments and stuff. It's really come a long way, but you know what? Um, interestingly enough, there's been a couple things that I've like, like some things just hit hard home to me. And, uh, Stefan Arneo and Grant Cardone both recently have been saying like, you have too many mentors, you have too many coaches, because there's too many people that just want to be coaches and mentors. And you're like, wait a minute here, we are full time investors. First, we have this these massive portfolios and still growing or changing and in we're in the moment. This is what we're doing, getting our hands dirty in the moment. And, um, and then on the side, so not on the side as in it's secondary, but we are teaching in the moment from the trenches, sharing current situations with our students to be able to say like, this is how you finance a property, not in 2010 when we were buying a portfolio. This is how you buy a property. This is how you finance a property in 2019 right now. And that's yeah. what I really like. Again, Andrew Brennan, you know, he was a mentor of mine. And at first he said, I said, oh, I think I want to be a coach. This was like way back. I had like five properties or something. He was looked at me and he was like, you can't be a coach. You don't even have enough experience yet. So two years go by, my portfolio's grown. And Andrew says, hey, now, um, or I meant, made a comment. And he's like, so are you coaching people yet? And I was like, oh, do I qualify now? So you certainly have earned every stripe that you have. But um, so how do you distinguish which people should go from free, free podcasts and, you know, here's this show. Yeah, you can watch this show to the next level of like we're solving ten to hundred thousand dollar problems um, with you are with coaching and mentoring. So mm -hmm. what do you how do you kind of look for or how do you determine if somebody's ready for that next level coach? I think when people are really ready to take action, um, I think a lot of people, you know, we have a tendency, especially because you look at the scale of the problem. So, or look at the scale of the potential loss. That's what a lot of people do when they're starting out in investing, right? They go, okay, if I make a mistake, you know, and I buy the wrong pair of shoes, I might be out a hundred dollars or $200. Yes. And they go, but if I make a mistake and I buy the wrong property, I might be out a hundred thousand, 200,000, half a million dollars. And I don't think I can financially sustain that kind of a loss. Yeah. So there's sort of, there's almost two ways that people I think can sort of identify that they're ready for coaching. One is that they're stuck in the analysis paralysis because they're so afraid of making a mistake. So they need someone to sit down and go, okay, here are the things that you need to look at and consider before you pull the trigger and buy this property. So if you're stuck in analysis paralysis and you don't know if you're making the right decision and you're waffling back and forth, that's a very big flag, a sign that you need someone who's going to support you, help you build your confidence, reinforce the decisions you're making, and basically sort of help you walk those first few steps in the process to building your portfolio. Um, the second thing I find, the second thing that can be a major identifier for someone who is ideal for coaching is I'm just starting out at the beginning and I don't know what I don't know. So I literally, I want to invest in real estate, but I don't know where to begin. And there's a massive amount of knowledge. And if you think as a real estate investor that you're going to reach the point where you can stop educating yourself, you can stop, you know, learning and watching podcasts and, you know, listening to books on, on you know, um, audio books. If you think you're going to reach the point where you don't need to do that anymore, then you're going to stagnate. So the reality is when you're starting out at the beginning, you know you want to invest in real estate, but you don't know where to begin. You don't know, you know, what are the strategies that are out there? How do I know what which ones are the right ones for me? You know, people sometimes listen to something like rent to owns and they think, oh, I want to do rent to owns. I want to help families. 
Well, there's a lot more to determining if an investment strategy is the right fit for you. You need to think about what are your financial resources? What are your net? What is your network? Um, where What's is that? At? What are your time resources? If you are, you know, a parent and you have kids and, and they're busy and you don't have much time, you need to be looking at investment strategies, whether you feel like they're the right ones for you. You need to look at strategies that don't require much time because the whole goal for most of us is to have this financial freedom and to spend that time with our families. And it doesn't make sense if to have the time with our families, we give up that time with our families when they're young, right? So we need to make sure that we're choosing the right strategies, we're choosing the right investments, and we're educating ourselves so that we are picking what is the highest and best, as Quentin D'Souza says, the yeah. highest and best use of our time at that particular moment. Time is now the number one commodity that people are worried about. You know, yeah. yes, there's money. Obviously, there's a lot of decisions made by by money. But the other thing, the major thing is time. And when you ask people what their why is, their why is not necessarily to have, you know, millions of dollars in, in holdings, but it's what the the freedom of time will allow because of that portfolio will allow them to do with their family you know whatever and um and and so it's just something that we've turned to to be able to say look at if if your value of time is there then let's get you so that you can start to value time more than trading than trading time for for a dollar nine to five monday to friday but um, I also believe that not everybody, so although I call my show the full-time investor, not everybody has the stomach to be able to do what we do. Yep. And, <laughs> you know, you might be able to get a coach or a mentor and be able to build a couple properties. Phenomenal. That's great. Uh, but not everybody needs to be a full-time investor. And so we still need doctors. We still need lawyers and dentists and nurses and, and, and everybody. Um, but there still is a way for you to be able to leverage that. Uh, leverage some coaching to get get your portfolio built well fast and then sit back and let let time um, on your side it's not what do they say it's not uh, it's not when you invest no it's how much you invest uh, the best time to buy was 20 years ago the next best time is today yeah, yeah all of those things let's get buying some real estate today yeah. Um, uh, Elizabeth, you are, um, just a wealth of knowledge. Larry's kind of given me the handshake, you know, Larry. <laughs> I tell you one day, Larry's going to be on this side. Aren't you, Larry? Um, I, everybody ends their shows with some fast questions and, and I haven't quite solidified what mine are, but I have a couple for you today. Um, I'd like you to share one myth that you want to bust to people out there about being a full-time investor. Um, that it's easy because it's not, um, there's a, a lot of challenges you face, whether it's, you know, the isolation of being home-based, uh, whether it's time management, whether it's struggling to have enough hours in the day to be able to do everything. Um, the solution to that is very simple. It's build a network and surround yourself with some amazing people who will help you out and talk you down off the ledge if you're there. But, um, Investing in real estate is not easy. If it was, everybody would do it, but it is infinitely rewarding. And the, the time and the freedom that you can generate for yourself is, um, is rewarding beyond, beyond Absolutely. words. Really. Yeah. So then on that same note, tell me a glory, something that you never foresaw possible if you had not become a full-time investor. I, I never envisioned myself as an entrepreneur. I never envisioned myself as self-employed and, you know, running multiple companies and, um, and, and being the boss. That wasn't something I saw for myself. I just always anticipated that I was going to be an employee somewhere with somebody telling me what to do and the absolute freedom to make the decisions about what I think are best to not worry about, you know, politics and, you know, what's going on at the management level and do I have job security and, and all those other things that come with being an employee. The absolute freedom to structure and run my business the way I see fit. I, I didn't foresee that, but the I, I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is the best way for people to reach you, um, to be able to get in touch with you, to discuss opportunities that you might have or your coaching program that you might have? What's the best way to reach you? Um, probably via email. Um, so Elizabeth at renttohome.ca. Yep. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from people.
I know you've got a bunch of action takers who are listening, Mandy. So I anticipate we'll both get some feedback. <laughs> I do. I do. That's for sure. And that analysis by paralysis, every time I bring it up, people always resonate with that. Um, and so I think we've given everybody a lot of uh, different action steps to be able to take um, some really good information that you've shared with us today. And I am so grateful that uh, that you are on my call, my call list to be able to say, hey, I'm stuck what would you do if you were in my situation? So, so thank you so much. Um, that, yes. Um, that concludes another show for us uh, this week. Um, I'm Mandy Branham. There we are there, solutions driven. Um, I am solutions driven. Don't come to me with a problem that you don't want an answer to because that's not how I like to leave people. If you're looking for a solution, um, that's, what I, that's what I seek out there. Sometimes not all solutions are easy they're not, they seriously aren't. Um, but if you're willing to put in the hard work and, uh, and the get some education, then there are certainly some results out there for you. So until next week, thank you, everybody. Uh, Mandy Brenham signing off the full-time investor.